All righty. Well, good evening. This is Nancy Fleming, and you are joining us for Money and Motivation with Joe. And tonight we have a really, really special guest I'm very excited to have. We have Loretta Love Huff, and she is the dream leader for business. She helps people and she helps small business owners. She's been an award-winning business consultant, a speaker, a coach. So she is training and she is mentoring business owners and sales people so that they will be able to grow their businesses. And we have seen her featured in a number of places in Phoenix Fox 10 Morning News, some radio shows, the New York Times, Phoenix Journal, Arizona Republic, and so forth. In addition, she has authored two books, so she is doing just perking right along here. Leadership Without Limits, Inspiring the Best in Yourself, Your People, and Your Organization. Also, Six Keys for Dissolving Disputes When Off With Their Heads Won't Work. Her third book will be out later this year. It is Sleep, Leap, and Reap the Bamboo, Approach to Lush Business Growth. Uh, there's more to her, but maybe we'll get into that. And tonight what we're going to do is just ask her a few questions. What we're hoping to do is to help people understand how to break free from their limiting beliefs and behaviors about your money type and discover the keys to experiencing financial freedom. As we all know, we all make mistakes. And some of those mistakes have to do with our money and our finances. Mm -hmm. Loretta, welcome. Do you want to add anything to that before we get started? Thank you so much. Well, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here, Nancy. And money is one of the things that I, I love talking about. And it's, it's a difficult conversation for most people because there's so much kind of emotional baggage that we've brought to our adult life from our childhood often. Uh, and so actually one of the things I did want to say is a little bit about how, my kind of philosophy of how I work with people. Uh, and one of the basics um, of it is what I call the bar theory, which has uh, nothing to do with Chardonnay or mojitos or beer or even wheatgrass. Which I'm really sure healthy. was a lot of people's first thought. <laughs> I'm sure I that's said that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Chardonnay is one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I think champagne's my very favorite, but Chardonnay is mm -hmm. the one I drink more of. In any event, the bar theory is an acronym, and it stands for beliefs actions and results. Oh, that's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Belief, actions, results. Right. Yeah, very good. And the theory goes that our beliefs shape our actions and those actions highly influence the results that we get in life. Mm -hmm. So if I could give you an example of how that works in, in life, imagine that you're driving down a major thoroughfare and you're um, approaching an intersection and there's a traffic light and the light is green. And your belief set is, you know, things generally go well for me, I'm having a great day, woohoo, all is well. Uh, what are you likely to say to yourself about you and that light as you're approaching it? When I approach that light, it is green, so it is <laughs> all go. That's that's my reaction that's as exactly well. That's exactly right. right. Yes. So the next actions that you take are you look at the uh, traffic light, you see if there's a pedestrian sign. Is it white or orange? If it's orange, is it flashing? If it's flashing, how many seconds are left? Are there any special appliances? And I saw a lot of them on the way out here today. Oh, did you? <laughs> any special appliances on the lights that I need to make note of? Well, and just to double check for somebody not running a red light on either side, too. And I've right. learned to do that in this state. Exactly, yes, because yes, that does happen a lot here. Yes. So are there any, um, yeah, any cars still approaching mm -hmm. it? Are there any... Um, appliances or any special other cars that are just sitting there waiting that I need to make note of. And if your brain continues to get all the right signals, the next action that you likely take is what? Just keep on going. That's right. Or put I on do the not, gas pedal. I do not speed up at green lights, but I do okay. keep on going. All right, good. That's good. So, but you do keep going. I do. So imagine if there's a person in the lane next to you and their belief set is very different. So they are the same distance from the traffic light, but their belief set is uh, life is really messed up. I never get any lucky breaks. I'm having a horrible day today. I never should have gotten out of bed today. They're going to look at that same uh, green light, and what are they likely to say? Well, they'll probably say, I guess I better slow down a little bit because I just know something's going to happen. It's that kind of day. Right, exactly. It's going to change. It's going to turn mm -hmm. red. I'll never make it. So they don't even bother to check to see what the pedestrian sign has to say to them. They take their foot off the gas pedal, maybe even apply the brake, and it's likely that you and I, with our <laughs> we-can-make-it attitude, it's likely that we get through and we say, yeah, I knew it. And it's just as likely that they get stopped. Because they've slowed down. Because they've slowed down, right. exactly. And they right. say, hmm, I knew it. 
Right. And uh, our beliefs shape our behavior a so lot. So often our beliefs, even though this, the road ahead is clear, we will not see it because we deliberately or maybe not deliberately, but we do blind ourselves. Right. right. We, don't, we don't even see it. And that, that was going to be another point mm-hmm. I was making. One of my fundamental beliefs is that we all have more options than we generally see and more control than we tend to take. So when we operate from empowering beliefs, we get to see more things that are there that we don't even notice when we think that nothing's possible for us. Well, you can see that just on, a, on in your own life on a day when you have a good attitude and mm-hmm. on a day when you just sort of wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Exactly. And that day just doesn't go well, but you probably did have the same green lights that you did on the day you felt good. Mm-hmm. Yep, just didn't I notice agree them with sometimes. That. Sure. <clears throat> so I help people, uh, you know, uncover those beliefs that they have about themselves that allow them to accomplish things. Things like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm really good with people, or I'm smart, or I'm good with money, Mm -hmm. or I um, I learn things quickly, or I'm very organized. Um, And I also help, because we all have those beliefs, (coughs) and um, I help them leverage those so that they accomplish even more, and they see even more opportunities. But I also, because we're human, we have beliefs that do get in our way, no matter how a great and driven and purposeful we are, right. we're humans. And so we have beliefs and that good, slow I, us down. Well, isn't a good example a person who's always late? Hmm. I mean, they have the same clock as everybody else, but for some reason they just are always late. Maybe they try to do that one more thing. So that's mm-hmm. a limiting belief. That's a real easy one, I think. You know, everyone. I think some people live that way where they, if they're not running late, they actually can't function. Mm. Oh. And I know somebody like that who just drives on that. I, I don't know what it is, but it drives me crazy. Right. Well, there's some fundamental belief that yeah, they have that has nuts. them continue to make those choices mm-hmm. that have them be late. So it's and, doing and it's the one like, more thing. Or? If you make it by 30 seconds, you know, that's how my wife is, by the way. <laughs> she She's a constant right there on the right when you're supposed to be there, not 10 minutes early, not 15 to relieve that stress. Mm. Bam. That's interesting. Maybe it's a game. It's a game to Mm. see, can I be there right there on time? I don't think it's actually a mental game that she thinks it's a game, but maybe she... It's a result of some thinking and some processing Mm -hmm. that's happening because we all do have those thoughts to drive what we do. Okay, so if we set this framework where people can understand and in a more simple, non-threatening, meaning non-money sense, because I agree with you, I have found money to be the Mm -hmm. most sensitive, the most private topic Mm -hmm. that there is. Right. And so, all right, so let's talk a little bit about... Um, do Are there money types of people like we have the type A personality, we have the type B personality? Are there money types, too, you have found in working with people? Right. There are actually several different models of money types. Oh, I'm going to talk about one today. Okay. Um, so the one that I'm going to focus on uh, is from something called the uh, money breakthrough method. Uh, mm-hmm. And it helps people understand kind of what their needs and drives are, what some of the disempowering Uh, behaviors, kind of the symptoms that you might have uh, if you're that particular type. Uh, And I'm also going to share some um, empowering beliefs that you might adopt uh, and some empowering behaviors that you can take. Because So you're saying just like we can change attitudes or like learn how to be early instead of late and other things, we can change attitudes about money. Um, and make our life better by going through this, the steps you're about telling. First, again, which t- what type we are, and then recognition and going on. So, so your, your type great. is probably not going to change. Oh, okay. So there's some things we cannot change. We yeah, just work around. You wor- yeah, and work around sounds kind not of so good. disempowered. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to use the words work around. We're going to say we're, there's, we're we going are a to basic focus money on, type. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to focus on some empowering behaviors that you can use to not be kind of disempowered in your mm-hmm. relationship with money. So when we get into these money types, or we're even though each money type. So a money type is not necessarily a positive or negative is what you do with it. Right, exactly. Okay, it's kind of like a deck that. of cards. You know, there's cl- right. clubs and hearts and diamonds Right, and so Joe, when we hit your mind money type, we're not going to freak out about it. <laughs> we're just going to realize that it's a non-judgmental. Exactly. Okay. This is a way to understand yourself. Super. Think, Let's um, let me really quick jump in here. Marianne mm-hmm. from Phoenix called in and said, could I have the contact info for the business coach? I have a brand new business we just started. Oh, super. Go so. ahead. Awesome. Well, my website is emeraldharvest.com. So like the gemstone and the fall event. E M E R A L D H A R V E S T dot com. And there's actually some free gifts on the website at emeraldharvest.com forward slash destiny, D E S T 
T-I-N-Y. Oh, that'll be a fun thing. People to go and explore the free gifts. Really cool. Mm-hmm. Free is a good Excellent. word. Excellent. Great. That goes well with money, doesn't yes, it? it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like free things? That's huh? true. Any of these types, I'm sure, can live with that. Exactly. All right. Well, exactly. super. Well, let's go into what are the types then. Okay, great. So one of the first type that I want to talk about is the, uh, the love type. Um, and as I go through these types, I do want our listeners to be paying attention and trying to decide which one is their primary one. Uh, and I've got some lovely cards here that I'll tell people how they can get access to if they're interested in them. So I'm going to be re- um, reviewing some of the information that's on these cards here today. So um, the love type is their primary need is to belong. Mm-hmm. So they want to feel like they belong. And they need to feel appreciated and connected to other people. And so because they have that need, uh, they, these might be the people pleasers of the world. So they want everybody to like them. They might spend money in order to belong. So all of the types spend money for different reasons, Mm -hmm. and the person with the love type or the love card, as I have here, um, does it so that they feel connected, so that they feel... So what kinds of things might they do so our listeners can understand if they feel like they're the love type? They cannot be politicians. (laughs) That's for sure. Okay. No politicians there. I don't don't think that's possible. I mean, thinking about it, I don't mean to interrupt, but the love type you got to try to make everybody happy. Right. And politicians have to have, and I've only learned this from Mm. doing political shows, Mm. they have Mm. to have such a thick skin because Uh. so many people, because they're politicians, don't like them naturally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't be a politician. Well, but uh, then I think about politicians, the, the people that they want to like them, they actually do want a lot of people to like them. So they're not pleasers necessarily, but they're pleasers to, you know, their tribe. They want their yeah, I guess that's true, huh? <laughs> they, yes. All right. That, that would, uh, just to take this uh, example a little bit further, uh, might be the reason that when they're in different groups, they say different things. They mm. promise mm. money, mm. don't they? Promise money. Gotcha. <laughs> Especially since it's not their own. I'm here to learn. Yeah, yes. now I didn't really think about politicians, so I'll have to go think and see. You know, probably if we looked at a lot of different politicians, we would see different uh, examples in here. So I'll try to think I've about never that. met one that everybody likes. Well, no. <laughs> probably not going to happen. <laughs> I don't know. What about George Washington? <laughs> Of course, that we would never we have met know, him. Right. That's right. But he, he cut down that right. cherry tree, and those cherry tree <laughs> right. growers, they, were, they were mad. It. Right, exactly. <laughs> so you would ask me, I think, about some examples of things that people yeah, might what do. What would be an, a behavior that a person who was a love type, mm-hmm. a love behavior type of money, what is something that they might do and okay. why? So, so we can recognize people that. People with this type tend to uh, kind of avoid, because they don't have a really clear, strong relationship with money so they tend to avoid noticing it so they might not look at their bank statements or their credit card statements when they come in okay they might actually buy kind of multiples of things um when they're out shopping of the same thing and why would they buy multiples when they're shopping because they are they want to feel you know like so not necessarily because they're on sale so Not okay, so so if you go to so if you're going to the store and there's something on really a good price, you buy several, mm-hmm. and that uh, that's there's another different. car. That's another a different. Okay, that so but that. they're just buying several things just because they feel, it'll make them feel good. Okay, so we've got money for a feel good reason. So exactly. they've got OCD. But, but it's interesting because you're saying that they don't look at bank statements and mm-hmm. they they don't feel connected to money, but yeah, but they the spend same, it. But they spend it. We all okay. spend it, no matter well, yeah, what we your type spend, is. Sure. We all spend it. Okay, so let's and, and some in different other degrees. Examples. So some of the other types um, spend a little bit less easily mm-hmm. than some of the others. Okay. Um, so they might. Um, what else might they do? Oh, so this is an example. This would be retail therapy. So if I think about um, my last marriage, when it ended, I did a fair amount of like spending, because this is my type. I am the love type. You're the love type. Okay, well, tell us what you do if you're not embarrassed (laughs) about it then. So I go shopping, and shopping makes me feel good. Um, Now, unrelated to money, people with the love type tend to be in organizations because they want to feel like they belong. Um, I was thinking on the way up here that all of our kind of current status is an evolution of the path, you know, over which we have walked all of our years or decades that we've been here on the earth. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is these types also may may not have may not be an inherent part of our personality, but they came about because of 
experiences in our life. Right. Okay. Very likely. Very likely. Like, For example, here's okay. my personal experience. Um, so I was adopted when I was a baby. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a very loving family. I was the only child. I was, you know, some of my friends would think spoiled rotten. I got most everything that I wanted. Not everything, but most things I needed. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something about when I met my biological family, feeling connected that I had missed the whole time that I was growing oh, up. So I, I never see. felt like, even though I knew I was completely loved, I never felt like I belonged. Wow. I never looked like anybody. I never walked or talked like anybody. And when I met my uh, father and his family and my mother's uh, family, I could see myself. And there's something about that familial recognition and belonging to a tribe that right, you just don't have. Right. You know, I didn't have that as I was an adopted. Sure. Right. So, right. so, and everybody who, you know, is adopted doesn't have a love card and people mm -hmm. who have this love card are not always, uh, you know, adopted, but there is some kind of drive. Like they feel like they don't belong and they need to be liked in mm -hmm. order to feel kind of included and secure. Oh, very interesting. And so that, so in your case, since you're, you know, shared the love card, you shop a lot and what would be a couple other things, behaviors that might help people identify? And you shop for yourself or you shop for others? Or well, both? and that's a good question. Yes. I shop mm -hmm. for myself. Some okay. of the other cards shop for other people. Shop wow. for, I, I, for I, myself. Yeah, I was going to say, because I'm thinking if a person loves and wants to belong, wouldn't they be out shopping? Shopping for others. Yeah, for everybody else right. so that they can. I was looking belong. for my gift. I'm like, <laughs> oh, the gift. Okay. <laughs> but your way of belonging, I guess because you belong to organizations, because you know, your outfits is just really beautiful. So you're mm -hmm. shopping for yourself as opposed to shopping for this but other people m might be the love of card but they would shop for others right okay any other any other identifying traits of the love um so they don't think about the consequences necessarily when they're buying things so they see something they say i like that i need that it's mm -hmm. going home with me thank you very much okay so they may not think about it so much okay so they're emotional spenders in that sense yeah okay yeah and, and all of them all of you know there's emotion underlying all of these but mm -hmm. that one is about belonging, belonging. and feeling okay. connected and loved and appreciated all right well what's the next one then okay. we'll kind of identify all of them then we'll go back through and talk about uh, how we can make those behaviors empower us rather than disempower us. okay so the next card is the recognition card so these folks people who have recognition as their primary need or drive are looking for respect so okay. they want to be, um, they want to be right. <laughs> they want to, um, what else do they want to do? They want to be, they're kind of slow to admit when things aren't going well. So they might be, at a, you know, they might invest in kind of speculative opportunities because they, they're kind of risk takers. So the recognition people are, you know, they're looking for the big win. So they might be the ones who would, who would be speculative investors. So they will buy a penny stock or they'll buy the high-risk stock. Mm -hmm. Maybe Facebook is an IPO, <laughs> for example. <laughs> right. That one didn't you go know. very well, did No, it? <laughs> it didn't. But, you know, looking for... So that they could, kind of like the big fish, so they can come and say, "Well, I bought such right, and exactly. such, or I bought such and such," and then they will have the respect of saying, "Oh, you did that investing, and right. well, how did you do that?" And well, would you help me with some of my investing? Is that the kind of thing? Yeah, we're but looking this is at? not the kind of person that you want to ask. Well, for I understand. I'm just saying that's what, I'm, what that's I'm what saying. That's what they're looking for. That's what they're looking for. Yeah, they're for. looking for they're recognition. Looking for that kind so they're of looking for popularity. Um, well, recognition. Yeah, more recognition. Not so much popularity. It's not. It's not the number of people. Like popularity to me is how many people love me. Gotcha. Um, so th there is some aspect of that, but it's more the being admired. Wow. Now, now, do they go buy things too, or is it all a matter of? Well, investing? they will buy things, and they'll buy things to make themselves look good. Um, okay. They might actually spend a lot of money on other people as well. So are they the are they the kinds that might buy planes or yachts or yeah. whatever they could afford? Okay. Yeah, that's so they can walk around card, and say I own a plane. And there's or another I own part a yacht. I'm going to talk about a little bit later who also okay. will do some things like that. But yes, they will. Uh, but this is more a recognition kind of thing, so that people. Um, well, give me an example. So, so what else besides? I mean, maybe they don't have. They might money have a lot of debt. Oh, because they've debt. made uh, investments. They'll be investing in people. They'll mm -hmm. invest in other things because they, they do like to take big chances because they're looking for that big win. So they might invest in things that don't really ever pay off. And mm -hmm. so they may have mounting debt. They might have. So um, would this, this recognition person be maybe highly entrepreneurial or does that not necessarily go together? Well, I would say highly entrepreneurial, but. Maybe um, gamblers? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's gambler. Oh, recognition yeah. is a gambler. Oh, good, good because if call, I think Joe. about somebody that I believe is this type, and I didn't have this conversation with that person, but um, they were they had a gambling mentality. Okay. 
And All right. um, they were going for, you know, speculative, big things rather than the slow and steady thing that some of the other types might do. So they might find slow and steady being boring, and they're looking more for the adrenaline rush. Right, exactly. So that they can, again, the big fish that they can mm-hmm. catch and, and the show applause. And the okay, got how, it. How far does this carry through in their life? I mean, are they also prone to be like bungee jumpers, whitewater rafters, or is this just are we talking about on the money end? I mean, does it carry through for the re- in the rest That's of their life? That's a good question. You know, I mm-hmm. bet that it would. I, you know, it'd be interesting to hear if there are any listeners out there who think that that's them, if they're one of those people. Gotcha. Because you know, I, I think about the person that I uh, believe, you know, that was um, in my life at some point, you know, close enough that I could kind of tell this. Uh, they had some behaviors like that, but not, they weren't bungee jumpers necessarily. Gotcha. But they're, that wouldn't surprise me if they were. Hmm. And if you want to call in, you can do so by calling 480-745-1033. So we have talked about people at the love card and people mm-hmm. who have the recognition card mm-hmm. as a money type. What else is there? So we have then the value card. Value. All this right. This person is um, looking for significance. So it's a little bit different than the recognition. It's not like they're a value stock investor necessarily. No. Okay, no. let's and go you know, from As there. I was driving over here, I was thinking of... You know, some examples of um, the different kinds of investments that people might mm-hmm. <laughs> participate in. Um, so the, uh, the recognition card that we were just talking about, they would be going for, you know, the unique thing, the thing that was really different, the thing that was high risk for the Perhaps you know, collectibles? The would that type be the okay. collectibles? Probably but not, not. necessarily. No, I think that's going to be more A different one. Card. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're into... So we're, the, we're talking about the value card The value card. card. So All the right. value card... Needs to feel value and needed. And because they need to feel me- needed, they do things. They do a lot of things for other people, and they're sometimes taken advantage of. So they're the ones that will loan money. Yeah. Okay, so there are value a couple types who will loan, loan money, money. But value is one Value is one who will loan yes. money. Okay. Because they are okay. um, you know, trying to be helpful, mm-hmm. um, and they tend to believe that people are going to come through, and yet they don't. So they tend to have a series of Think people that they've helped that didn't turn out well. So they're doing things more personally now. Is the value type also the person that would be more philanthropic and give to worthy causes? Or is it more a personal thing of the bailing people out? It's, it's more personal and bailing people out um, because what they're looking for is feeling valued. And being philanthropic, I don't think that really gives you the It's not value. personal yeah. enough. Okay, okay. That was uh, Ben from Phoenix on the line who said uh, him being the recognition card for sure carries across the board in his life and his friends that also are the same way. Okay. They, he said not necessarily bungee jumping, but he definitely likes thrilling, to, excited to live on the edge. Okay. okay. That's good so to know. To feel good that about is it. Good. So he so. lives on the edge with his money and in everything else in his life. And he's in six different groups, he said, of, of activities with oh. the same type of people. Oh, so that's interesting. <laughs> Birds that is of a feather flock together. Well, probably a lot of other huh. of these money card types mm-hmm. might not relate to that. Cause interesting. It, that is very interesting. Thank you for calling. Yeah, I appreciate, sure appreciate that. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. All right, so we're on the values. Mm-hmm. So let's see, what are the so other So would this symptoms? be along the lines of parents who help their children? Is that something different? Well, That's parents more helping thing. their kids when their kids over Older. and over and over and over and over okay. again never you know, come through. To where they're more enabling. Exactly. It's kind of like enabling behavior. Okay, because I have an extended family member that needs to retire and is still helping adult children who Mm. are single parents Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. has, and they're in their 30s now, I'm sure, but has Mm. no money because all his wages go there. Mm -hmm. And so people who... So they get taken advantage of then probably more than the love card. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the value fit anybody and out there. And then they feel resentful about it. So there's also this component of, you know, because it he, it keeps happening and they don't understand that it's partly them that w- is why it keeps happening. So because it's a vicious circle because they right. want to be treated with value. So they're doing a very kind person, mm-hmm. kind thing to a person, giving them money that maybe they could use themselves, right. expecting that the recipient will value them and see them for the good person that they are. Mm-hmm. And instead the recipient doesn't respond that way and ends up often using the person who's seeking value. So they are not receiving what they're hoping that they are, quote, purchasing. Exactly. And they often are in word. relationships that are like that. 
So they, oh. they, they tend to get into situations like that over and over again. It's not just a one-time thing. So now they've Good. got this pattern built up, and now they feel victimized because mm-hmm. they know people disappoint them, but they continue mm. to do it. All right, so it'll be interesting when we get over to how we can <laughs> leverage that for the positive, because uh, I'm sure we all know people who are like that. Now, is that all? We've got, uh, we've got the love, we've got, we've got recognition, we've mm-hmm. got values. That's three. More. Oh, mm-hmm. two more. Okay. Yep. So the other uh, type is a status. And this one sounds a little bit like uh, recognition. Okay. um, Because they are doing this for, uh, they want to be noticed. So if we're talking about purchasing a yacht or a plane, the recognition people would do it for one reason, the status people for a different reason, Mm -hmm. even though they might do the same thing, they have a different motive. Right. So the status person is doing this really to show off. So they Mm -hmm. spend compulsively and they show off their purchases. So the... um, recognition person might buy the yacht but they're doing that they probably buy it even though they don't really have the money for it <laughs> the status person is going to buy it but they're going to want everybody to know that they've done this so they're like and the maybe how much adopter. they paid for exactly. it exactly so the status right. person they'll have parties be, on it they'll okay. invite everybody to come over so the recognition person might not necessarily talk about how much they spent but the status person's always going to let you know how much they spent mm-hmm. because it's a status to say this and i'm right. sure and okay. they're buying designer things and yachts mm-hmm. and and inviting people picking up the tab when they go out oh picking up folks. the tab so if we know a status person we don't necessarily have to be concerned about paying our own tab because it'll make them feel real Im- really good. <laughs> right, we don't true. need to feel guilty about that. I need to meet a few it. more of those. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> you Just need seven. Like and they give lavish gifts, too. Nice. Oh, okay. So if you're a status person, uh, my name is Joe Carrero <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> feel free to friend me. You're funny. So they're very exciting. And their personality is like that, too. So they, you know, I think of one of the people that I believe is this card, uh, she is always treating people, kind of having big parties. She's got a really big personality. She has wonderful things. She buy, you know, takes people to lunch oftentimes. And she's just, it's a wonderful woman. Uh, but, you know, it makes me wonder kind of what, what's happening underneath as well and what's kind of driving some of that. They better be very motivated and make a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. And often they do. <laughs> um, Rose from Albuquerque would like to know, is she a value person if she is thrifty always goes to yard sales and clips coupons and can she work with you online on some of these other issues since she lives there is there a way you can work with her otherwise than in person i work with people over the telephone almost all the time and she could either be the value person or there's one more card that i'm going to talk about she might be that one as well and based on my experience i bet she's going to be the one that you still have left yeah i think so too that's what right. I'm thinking. All right. Any so more hang on the tight, sta- Rose Joe, from under- Albuquerque. Joe, do you understand status so far? The status thing? The status I, card. For- I do. Okay, I'm, super. I'm thinking maybe that's where I'm at. You think you're a status I, I person? I think maybe. Well, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Is no, this your not. studio? Just, it is. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> you own the studio and look how nice it is. He's got four monitors and all that's kinds of That's right. You know, all kinds of gizmos. <laughs> yes, status. Well, Joe, I will friend you then. Okay. Right. Please I'll, do. Thank you. <laughs> Who is, uh, the, what is our last card? The final card? card is the security card. Security card. Okay, caller from Albuquerque. Listen this to could this be you. one. So security yeah. people tend to hoard money. They live very frugally. Uh, they work really hard because they think that if I work really hard, that'll create more security for me. So they're looking mm. for uh, creating a, a safe and secure environment that lets them live independently. Now, let me ask you this. Yes, yes, when yes. we talk about, so that means they're not wanting to spend a lot. So wouldn't, they, yes, now, that's when, hard for them. as you describe this, it reminds me a lot of the Depression era mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. because they had to be so careful. I know I have, uh, um, some, I know some people who are quite well to do and their mother's very well to do and the mother is Depression era. And she will not spend money. She will put duct tape on her slippers first before she will go buy new slippers. They Uh were telling me this story. But it's very common for me to hear this from the Depression era people. They were taught, you know, the use it up and wear it out saying. Mm -hmm. And so they were taught to keep things because you would be able to use them later because there was such scarcity. So I think that that perhaps the security-minded people, that to me is really environmental because we don't see any other generations who are as security-conscious as Not the Not as security-conscious, but so those, those uh, um, Depression-era people raised children okay. who are raising children. And so there I are see. some security people around right now okay. you know, who are not... Uh, of the Depression era. So do security people now, as we have the 
the lady who called who's visiting yard mm-hmm, sales mm-hmm. and things like that. Is that common with the security people and the value or more common with the security it's people? A little, well, well, and let me say this too, that it's uh, likely that you've got one or two of these. So you might r- relate to a couple of them. Oh, kind of like ah, your personality. That, that makes me feel better because right. I love yard sales. I'm thinking, great, I'm the cheap status guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be I unusual. Would, well, we're not going to rule that one out, but, but it would be. <laughs> I so, stop at so all yard sales. So we have a main one, and then mm-hmm. we sometimes have a minor one, sort right, of like exactly. going to college with your major and minor. Yeah, so it kind of depends on what's driving the caller who called in to go to yard sales. But mm-hmm. security people, they they uh, they have a hard time indulging in things, so they have it's difficult for them to uh, lavish themselves. I see what like you're saying. Love mm-hmm. people, la- we lavish ourselves. We don't have an and, issue with that. And when you really think about it, and, and by the way, this caller here, you hit it right on the head, but going back to the yard sale thing, I go to yard sales, I love them because I can't wait to see what I'm going to find. Mm. It's not necessarily about mm. the dollar item. It's the treasure you know what or something? Right, yeah. right. Oh, I, it's the status right, I, thing. I, must, Look what I oh, found right, at yeah. the yard. Is and that really you go it? Or oh, this amount of money. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I got this great treasure and right. it was I need help. <laughs> well, you know, Bertha and uh, Miles, Bertha and Miles, 76 years old, they said you hit it right on the head because they have plenty of money in the bank. Their kids absolutely hate. They keep their house at 84 degrees to save the money, mm. and they don't want to spend. And their kids say, go spend the money. What are you doing? You're mm-hmm. not going to take it with you. They can't do it. Mm. They said they absolutely just cannot mm-hmm. do it. I have many, many clients. I spent my life, wow. my career, working a lot with World War II, and they've really influenced me as far as money is concerned, as opposed to my baby boomer generation right. values. And they can't. You like you said, you cannot change it when you've lived in such scarcity. We have not lived like that. We do not know the toll that it takes. We just hear the stories and say, "Gosh, that really would have had an effect on you." But I don't know any depression. I, I shouldn't say I don't know any, but I know very, very few. And I know, and but they do have a lot of money because they know how to save and they know the value of a dollar. Where exactly. younger generations <laughs> think that. of money as a renewable resource mm-hmm. well she they said, know it isn't she said they buy dale bread i mean she was telling me kind of the things they do oh, sure. and it was you know when i think about my husband's parents almost like who are still alive so they are in there uh let's see dad's in his mid 80s and mother's about to turn she's going to be 80 i think next year and you know one of the things that she says is i never throw anything away and i think that's mm-hmm. really typical of people that's who are in scary they find well <laughs> and yet she's got a really neat house, so she's not a hoarder. But she, mm-hmm. as you see, will you know duct tape the. <laughs> right. You know she will do things like that and just find a use for everything. Gotcha. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's summarize the five. Just mm-hmm. rattle them off, so and then we'll go the through each love, one. In love, uh, recognition, status, uh, value, and security. Very good. All right. Now let's start with the first one we talked about, which was the the love one. And how do we then turn that one? Or what, what's the second step to turning that into something that's powerful for us? So at the beginning, I talked about our beliefs and how okay. they shape us. So I'm mm-hmm. going to give people some empowering beliefs and then also some uh, empowering activities that they can do to help them kind of expand their repertoire of how they deal with money. And one of the fundamental um, beliefs that we have around money here is that the way that you do money is the way you do everything. So if you are able to kind of stretch yourself into some new behaviors with regard to money, you might also then find the ability and courage to stretch yourself in some other ways uh, that will allow you to discover discover other opportunities that are around. Oh, that's nice. So we will so we'll benefit. Now, does it, have you found it to be the reverse? Let's suppose somebody's working on a different character defect for lack of a better word they want to improve something about themselves Mm -hmm. and some and so as if they improve that is will that also help with their money skill or is there not necessarily a correlation there you know i think that it could um but not necessarily not necessarily okay so we have to really focus on money beliefs right if that's what we're working on specific exercises that i can take people through in a variety of uh arenas that will help them you know come to grips more with their relationship with money that will help them feel more empowered and more free more confident about it uh different ways to deal with debt that's mounted up and you know any of these types (coughs) 
excuse me, can create debt, although this last card, the security card, tends not to have too much. They tend to have more money stockpiled and saved. Right, because they're afraid. But, you know, mm-hmm. debt is very scary for people. Mm-hmm. As, you know, and how very you're shameful pay it off. as well. Yes, we, we do. We, 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 because we're, we're raised to think, and it's so true that if we're responsible, we will live within our means, which mm-hmm. is true. That's responsible behavior. Being in debt is irresponsible behavior. And I think that's why a lot of people won't talk about their finances, mm-hmm. either because if we're on the one side and we have money, and we're not living like we have money, there's the status of, really, why aren't you spending it? And on the other mm-hmm. side of people who are in debt, who are spending like they have money and don't, well, they don't want to talk about it either right. because their behavior is embarrassing. Exactly. Yes. And yet there are times when having debt is okay. So having a mortgage is okay. Having a car note, if you can afford it, is okay. Um, and if you're gonna, if you're a business owner, you will sometimes need to invest in your business and perhaps incur debt. But you need to have a kind of a clear payoff plan. plan. Uh, if you are going to invest, uh, not invest, go into debt. So just, mm-hmm. you know, some of these types are more inclined to go into just debt just because, you know, they don't right. have a good relationship. They're kind of avoiding the whole thought of it. They don't recognize how much debt they're not keeping track of how much they have. So they kind of sweep it under the rug. So they're they're not doing it. Well, One a couple of weeks ago, we talked about our lizard brain back here, which mm-hmm. is you know the reactionary, right. and then we talked about the front part. So we're really again coming back wanting to deal with money in a very logical manner and trying to strip away all of the emotions. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, our, our emotions will always be there. It's it's when they're driving our behavior and we don't notice it. That it's a problem. Oh, that would be that would be powerful in any decision we make. Right. Okay. So let's go back. So let's start with the loved one. Mm-hmm. Can I can I jump in with really you quick? Bet. Eileen from Tempe, Arizona. A uh, couple of questions. Do you help organizing like their office and home as part of your service? Uh, I do not do that. I have a friend who is a feng shui expert, um, and I know a couple of people who do that, but that is not my specialty now. But you could give a referral. I could give you necessary. referrals, yes. Okay. Okay. Great. And then the next question is, Nancy, need your investing help with our portfolio. Is there an initial consult fee? Love your show, Eileen and Lewis. No, the initial consult, there's no fee because people need to come in and talk. Got to get to know them and see what they can do. Got to get to know them. Mm-hmm. And I don't want people walking in and saying, looking at the clock because we get on a tangent talking about something and then they're worried about that. So, no, just come on in and we'll visit. And then we'll know whether or not there's any, you know, it's a mutual thing. They got to see if they like me and I got to see if I can help them. So, yeah, don't just come on in. Right. It is fine. Thank you, Eileen and Lewis from Tempe. Remember, money's very personal, <laughs> so we have it to treat it like that. Oh, very good. And, yes, thank you for the call. All right, love card. Mm-hmm. How do we, what do we do next? We now know we have the love card. Our listeners out there are kind of shaking in their boots. Right. How painful is this going to be? <laughs> will not be painful. So here's uh, okay. adopting an empowering belief will help with the transition. And when we have new beliefs, we sometimes have to kind of reinforce them over and over again because initially they may feel like, oh, that's not true. So the empowering be- belief for a love person is, I am loved no matter what, all of the time. So they're going to say to themselves, I am loved no matter what, all of the time. Mm-hmm. And so do they just, is that sort of, um, is that like a positive a affirmation they give themselves? or and It is something like that. And I would say the, the, a particular time to do this is when they're about to spin something. Mm. And there's uh, a little voice in their heads, you know, beginning to question is this a good idea so you know if they're if they can ask themselves am i making this purchase in order to feel like i belong or to solve some kind of hole in my heart or in my soul Mm -hmm. uh, probably something you want to think about and do you say go home and eat a big bowl of ice cream (laughs) i mean because this could start some like eating disorders and all kinds of things well if you say i am loved no matter what oh there you go there you go ice cream is good though i imagine that uh, yeah it's hard (laughs) i think i think i found an ice cream substitute we won't talk about that right now maybe we should no it's chardonnay That does make you feel good. We want to lift that serotonin now, don't we? Um, all right, so we're going to, when we go to spend something, if we can pause for a moment, usually anytime we're going to go do something that's emotion-based, if we can just pause and get a grip, mm-hmm. we, we may do the same decision and do the same action, but we, at least we'll have stopped to check it. Right. So positive affirmation, I am loved no matter what, is mm-hmm. that right? And mm-hmm. so when we go to spend and something, then we can say, I'm loved no matter what, 
is this a purchase that I really need to make since I'm loved no matter what? Right, exactly. Okay, right. that's great. So like there's, that. you know, there's the uh, adopting the new belief, kind of practicing it, questioning why am I doing this? Because, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we uh, we don't always recognize those beliefs that we have. You know, when I talked about those earlier, they're not speaking to us out loud. They're speaking in a whisper. Right. And so we won't necessarily know in the moment that we're buying something that there's an emotional need that's driving it. So we so have, we'll, right. we'll justify we have to justify it some so kind of So number way. one <laughs> step is going to be to start to recognize these things that we've just done without thinking. They're almost a habit. Right, exactly. We just go through the motions and later we think... Why did I do that again? Mm -hmm. And now, now we have a mantra we can say. I am we loved realized, no matter what. We realized we did it because we were we did that spending and we spent money with it. We didn't really need to spend or want to spend because we were seeking love and we're seeking to fill a hole in our heart this time with money as opposed right. to ice cream. Exactly. Okay, very good. Yep. What's all right now? Is that all for the love card? And yeah, well there there are lots of other things here on the card, but yeah, let's is move there, on well, let's do a second cards. one. Let's okay. do two things in case that mantra um, somebody needs to So another of one, one because I said the love people tend to um, kind of ignore money. They don't have a strong relationship with it. So oh, one really that's practical important. thing that they can do because sometimes people think affirmations are kind of airy fairy. Mm -hmm. One really practical thing that you can do is start tracking your income and expenses every day so you know you i have recommended that to people a lot you're spending and if you find on. that you can't track that and it's it's often because a person will make an excuse and they're just they're too busy or they'll right. do it later yeah, that's an excuse. What you're you saying could. is just stop and that's <laughs> mm -hmm. a practical one because if people are spending without thinking we have to force ourselves to think again similar to a diet diary you're going to write it down you know you really want to eat that food bad enough to okay. have to go write it down so over here we're saying do you really want to spend that money enough to have to go write it down and i guess what we're doing is encouraging accountability that's here. what it is because you know okay. I've, I've started doing this myself and it's annoying <laughs> even though i'm a really good receipt keeper you know, i do that every <laughs> now and then and I started a while back, and then it wasn't the right time of year for me mm -hmm. to do it. But I'm about to start it again because I just think that a person needs to just stop and analyze what they're spending. Right, and, and that's more what it yeah, is. Yeah, you're never going to catch some careless habit with your money if you're just not paying attention. Exactly, and that's what this that particular exercise is of you know of all the things that I could recommend. That one is designed to have you confront what you're doing. So it may not make you stop. Mm -hmm. that's not really the point of it the point is let's be accountable let's stay on top of it let's recognize how much we're doing let's see if there are some patterns here and then you know after you've evaluated it for a bit you might kind of step back and say well geez i just noticed i spent all this stuff on things <laughs> that maybe i didn't really need after we all when i do that spot check that's what happens to me and that's mm -hmm. why i generally do it at least once a year if not twice and i'll stop and i i do the old-fashioned ledger i still mm -hmm. like to write right. as opposed to <laughs> putting it That's in the computer there's uh -huh. something about the hand mind connection yeah, no, still so for too. me yeah, I agree. and i'll look at it and i'll say i just spent whatever it was i spent you know what else i could have done with that mm -hmm. and i don't know which card i am but you know just accountable i said i think i'll rethink this and sometimes i'll just make it a point not to walk into a store now between christmas and after tax season i never walked into a department store mm -hmm. Not a good thing, because Ross loved me the day I finally walked into the <laughs> department store. <laughs> but I hadn't been for four months. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. But I did analyze afterwards to see what I've had to take anything back. And it was like, well, no, everything I got, I think, has a has a use. I was okay with it. But, you know, four months. Did someone call? We've got an interesting case here. Okay. Um, Trisha from Foster, Rhode Island Ooh. says, I am an alcoholic. And I have a very addictive personality. Um, I go through lots of men, and I spend on everything I want. And I'm always broke, and I'm always sad, and I always have buyer's remorse. Mm. What do I need, and what am I? That's a good I mean, question. Holy so cow. One of the Maybe you need some antidepressants. <laughs> one of the things I was thinking, is, you know, it's kind of hard to tell just from that. That's a tough that one right there. It might be the love card, you know, because, you know, it, I don't know what's driving the drinking. Um, or uh, can you just read through some of that? Yeah. Again? Alcoholic goes through a lot of men, very addictive personality yeah. and buys everything she wants. And she's always broke and sad. That's very, that's very sad. Yeah, that could be a couple of things. That that could be the that could be the status card. Mm. It could be. It, it's a little bit hard to tell. It could be the love card. I sure wish she would have come on. I, I wanted her to come on the air so you could talk to her, and right. she was 
just not comfortable with that. Well, especially so being sure. so sad. That sounds like the hole yes. in the heart you're right, talking exactly. about where so people are purchasing and doing thing. things because they're trying to fill mm. up the hole in their mm-hmm. heart, the different relationships, not being right. able to be alone because of the hole in the heart. Right. So then you spend the money to make sure you always have somebody around you. Wow. Yeah, that's where I would go with yeah, that. So and that's, that, I think, where the affirmation might come in mm-hmm. because it sounds like the caller's already aware they're spending too much money. They're already aware that their behavior is She not was very them. aware. Yeah. It's just where to very go. I'm loved no matter what all yeah. of the time. So that's the thing. And finding love within important. yourself and... Right, and not not in other men or in a right. wine bottle. Loving yourself. We're joking about Chardonnay. You know, it it can be well sometimes. Problematic. Well, and sometimes <clears throat> people have found it helpful because you know I'm like you, I'm single, and sometimes it's lonely, and so I've I've practiced what I can do in order to feel fulfilled with being alone and I don't mean belong to organizations and I sometimes call it going into the silence and it's like okay and I go there and and I look for that love from wherever it comes from Mm -hmm. but if you're looking for it it will come and then you'll be more comfortable I think being able to make decisions that empower you as opposed to decisions that make you that disempower you because you're so um, wanting, you know, the drink takes away the emptiness in the heart, the mm-hmm. companionship that even mm. though it's superficial takes it away, the spending the money, it's all things to try to So the spending is just to make her feel good? She's always mm, broke, the, so how does yeah. that work? The spending well, because, is, isn't she because buying when company? She buys, it's, it's kind of the same thing as drinking, yeah, really. It's, so, as, you know, when I spend like something for me, I feel better. I feel like at least I love myself. Um, and so it's kind of feel filling Oh, I got gotcha. you. So I'm going to give her one more suggestion off of the, the love card here. Um, so one other idea would be to keep a daily appreciation journal. So every time you feel appreciated throughout the day, write that down. And how about appreciating ourselves? Wow, that's right. a, that's a yes, great so What a great tip. Mm-hmm. If you so if, do if we, some things yourself to appreciate and then, then, if, write then if them the, down. Right, if there's self-appreciation, it will mm-hmm. be easier to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to spend that money on or for something or someone else. I'm going to wait and set it aside because I appreciate me and because I'm loved, I'm going to love me mm. and take care of me. Right. And so we'll have more healthy spending behaviors. Mm-hmm. That's a great suggestion. Wow, yeah. thank you, Tricia. Take care out there thank in you, Foster, Trisha. Rhode Thanks Island. Thanks so much for calling. And then the second one that we were talking about was then the recognition card so let's go through that a little bit with what how we can leverage that and empower that card so the recognition card so they need to these are the 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 risk takers so they're an empowering belief that they could take on is i feel uh respected for who i am because they are trying to get they're trying to get kind of recognition from the outside to make them feel better Okay. So not <clears throat> necessarily an adrenaline rush here. Not well, necess- not, necessarily, not necessarily because that, it's you know, the our recognition. Told us, they, mm-hmm. they tend to. Um, okay. Trying, but well. the recognition because they're trying to outdo each other, maybe, could or be. keep keep up with each other. Yeah, okay. It could be. So we're trying to say, so repeat so that gonna, again. So they are um, going to say to themselves, I feel respected for who I am. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so not s- for what I do. Right. Exactly. I'm respected for, for who, who I, I am. am. My essence of my character, mm-hmm. not for what I do. Okay. Exactly. And so some of the, you know, a couple of things that they might do, because they are risk takers, and this is going to sound really okay. boring and like, oh, my God, I don't want to do this. So these folks should join an investment club. Oh, interesting. <laughs> All right, caller with your safe. six groups. <laughs> okay. Why don't you get together and form an investment club? That mm-hmm. would be interesting. Okay, and that's great. And then great if, if you do have Or this even kind a of finance club where they have or have or look for finance speakers and hmm. even if they go there as opposed to but a club would since since the caller was already in six organizations then it looks like part of that uh the recognition card is this joining. So yeah, I guess that's why you're saying the club. Well, um it, the person, uh, it's a little hard to tell, you know, what they're joining and for what, because it sounded well, like they were joining for the the thrill the, of the stuff mm-hmm, that they the were doing. So it might not doing. have been a belonging thing necessarily. Mm-hmm. It might have been like, here's some other people who are crazy like me. <laughs> and so I'm going to go hang out with them. <laughs> but it, yeah, if they have this crazy mentality, you're right. It would mm-hmm. be boring to start an investment right, club. Exactly. However, I'm but sure they could make their money. It, it would be good for their money. And then they would be educating themselves. And then they could get recognition by making a wise investment decision right. as opposed to a crazy a investment decision. One, yes. mm-hmm. Boy, this, uh, I'll tell you, we're, we're getting some real interesting, almost sad cases here today. We, Lucy from Los Angeles called. Uh, she moved there from the Midwest to be a movie star. Works at a fast food place and saves every penny she gets. Mm. 
and then invested in plastic surgery to make herself better. She's also anorexic. Hmm. What should she do? Well, that sounds like... Mm, that sounds like it might be a status card. I'm it's, not it's, sure. I mean, these are these are serious conditions. Yeah, it sounds they are. like. So read me those symptoms one more time. Moved from the Midwest uh-huh. to L.A. to be a movie star. Now and see that that tells me kind of status or recognition because okay. like, most people don't aspire to be a movie star. So she's looking for, and I'm you know stretching it here, but I'm, I would say looking for public admiration. Mm-hmm. And works at a fast food place, but saves every penny she gets. That's good. But for plastic, plastic surgery, surgery. Right. Right. to make herself look better. She's not really right. saving it. She has. And she's, she's spending it. And she she's just, anorexic, so she doesn't gain weight, apparently. Well, probably because she's trying to look good. So I'm thinking status. Okay, so when we get to status, listen up, then we'll give you some empowering activities. All right, so we've got the investment club. We've got the two things for the recognition. We have I am valued for who I am. Is that close to what you said? Right. Mm-hmm. And the second one is create an investment club. So you get your group together and you learn about investments and making sound investments and gain recognition from the sound investments rather than the speculative ones. All right, on to the third one. Yeah, I'm kind of rethinking the You're caller rethinking? who just called okay. in. So she might, be the, she might be the love card if she's trying to get approval. It kind of depends on... Can these people call you? I mean, uh, you know, at well, some actually, point, and, <laughs> and maybe I was going to make. Can, let me just say this. So I, I've been talking about these uh, incredible cards here that really define uh, each of the different types and what their challenge is and what their disempowering beliefs are and what some empowering beliefs are. So I wanted to let people know that they are available uh, on my website. Although the website's not live now, it won't be live until this evening. But well, what's your website again? Let's repeat it. Emeraldharvest.com forward slash money cards that's where this uh these cards will be available and now remember if you go there now it's, it's not going to be right, live right. so don't think you went to the wrong place exactly it'll say page not found but i don't mean worry about that, be so. safe wait till midnight or tomorrow <laughs> and and then tonight sh- it'll be up tonight. okay I'll there go, we go i'll go back to the right on do it. so emeraldharvest.com forward slash money cards so the cards are um 24.95 and the first 10 people who order that will get a private half an hour session with me. Wow. So right that on. Is, yeah. Very good. All that right. is very fantastic. Hard, you get a 20, you get a um, 30 minute session with me. And we Which is why it won't be live detail. until tonight because you want it to be after the show right. today. Sure. That's great. That, very nice. Okay. Very nice offer. All right. So the third one mm-hmm. we were into, I don't remember the order that we went. Yeah, we did love and on. recognition and, Let's go th- to values. I think we did values the next. Value. So the value person is looking for, um, you know, feeling needed and valued. And this is the person who seems to attract people around them who are needy so that they can help them. Mm-hmm. But then they feel resentful about it. And they're kind of um, blind to the fact that this repeating pattern has anything to do with them. They feel like they're victims of unfair circumstances out there, mm-hmm. not recognizing that it's them. So um, empowering, so their disempowering belief is that I need to prove that I'm good enough. Like they're, they're rescuing the people around them so that they feel good. And their empowering belief is I empower others by empowering myself. Okay, so say that again. So their tendency is to empower other people. They think they're empowering other people. But they're, but they're, really, really. Disempowering, they're really disempowering other they're people. They're disempowering other people and disempowering themselves. Uh-huh. Okay, but they right. think they're empowering other they think people. They're helping. And they think they're helping themselves. Well, they think they're helping the other person, okay. for sure. Okay, and how do they think they're benefiting by doing uh, well, this? Because then they feel, I won't say like a hero quite, because that's more a, a different type, but they feel, they feel good for helping. Okay. But then they're taking advantage but of But how would you, so what they're do like they They're really have? good friends. These, are, these people are like really good friends. They right. go out of their way to do things for people, and they, they never quite get all that reciprocated. Okay, so but they're, they're expecting some reciprocity. But they don't get it. So kind of what, 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 what's the drive inside? Yes, they feel like they're helping. Don't they want something in return? Don't they want to be well, the, that they're treated helping a certain way? makes them feel better. Okay, so just the that fact they're that they're helping. helping. Do, what, them feel they don't expect like the person they're helping to do anything or feel any way towards well, they, they them? Well, they kind of do, but then they, it's, it's kind of an odd uh, situation. So they, they expect that the person's going to do something back or to appreciate them, and the person doesn't necessarily, okay. which is why they keep getting... Uh, it's not why, but they keep getting into situations like that because they always they always have people around them who need help, and they 
think that life is going to change, and because it doesn't change, then mm. they feel victimized and resentful about it. Okay, so if you feel victimized and resentful. Mm, like if you have a long train of stories of people that you've helped that haven't, you know, done right by you, mm -hmm. this is probably your card. Okay, so what <laughs> does the, and that's, this one is, again, all of them, you've got this person that has these great motives and is, and a lot of people have benefited. So how do we take the values card then and have the individual doing the help do it in a manner that they also benefit and they're not um, what do we want to say, enabling someone else? Right, exactly. So this is kind of a boundary issue. A boundaries, okay. okay so, you know, people that have soft boundaries will give and give and give and give and give and give and give, mm -hmm. um, and it never turns out well. So the, what I had just said about I empower others by empowering myself. So if they start focusing on, focusing on empowering themselves and making sure that they're making decisions that aren't coming from... You know, I need to do this. It's kind of like the, the love card and the shopping. So asking myself uh, before I give to this person, is this helping me? So they need to be a little bit more selfish. That's kind okay. of a simple values. way to look at it. They need okay. to be a little bit more which, selfish. Which I'm it. imagining the values card would be an uncomfortable thought. Oh, it would be horribly uncomfortable. <laughs> right. Because they, they is like Is there another being, word that you have found values card holders to use besides being more selfish if they can't you know find that word impalatable well um uh let's let me come up with some so s strong um okay. able to say no that it's mm -hmm. okay to say no that saying no will actually help that person that they think they're going to help in the long run better than okay. helping them out of the emergency that they're in right now because it will teach the other person how does problem solve on their own? Right. So the values person could say, I can say no mm -hmm. to the person needing help, especially if it's the however many times, because this way the other person will have to creatively come up with their own problem solving skills. Right. So in this way, the Or they'll find somebody else to go and ask, but it won't be me, and I won't feel resentful about it. Well, which means they they become more creative with their problem solving skills. <laughs> but really, the values mm -hmm. person, you know, because I see a values person not really being able to use the word selfish. But if they can say, "I'm being strong and I'm valuing myself, yes. and I'm also valuing the other person by helping them with problem solving skills," because up to this point they don't have them, right? And because people will survive, and so they'll figure, they will. Something, they'll figure else. something else. We out. had we had two calls here oh, that we did. Oh, we're great. getting a little behind here, and oh. they were just comments actually. One from Richard in Mesa said um, they really love the show. It must mean him and his friend or wife or whatever. Uh, really love the show, um, and we love you too, Nancy. We are weekly listeners. Thank you. Oh, that's great. I didn't know Richard was a weekly listener. A weekly listener. <laughs> that's and wonderful. Then, then we have Jake from Phoenix who said, love the show, fantastic guest, great show, and we love you, Nancy. Same thing, pretty oh, much. Jake from you. Phoenix. Yeah, so thank you. Very good. And thank you. Start, yes. You better start. You are to, a great guest okay, too. This is you. So are a wonderful guest. Oh, thank you. This is really right up my alley. So I mean, helping people understand their money and their money mm -hmm. behaviors is something that's near and dear to my heart. Of course, with my line of work, you of can course, imagine. Of course, yes. Can't work with people <laughs> if they. You, you got to always work around these. I do a little bit of money counseling too. So. And this is great. All right, so we went through the values, which mm -hmm. is the person who's just, you know, to me, my heart almost goes out to that person because I've, I have met people like this. I have clients come in who worry about their kids. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my mm -hmm. clients aren't coming in like this because the values people rarely have any money left, but they'll come in worried about their kids and say, I don't dare include such and such because they care so much about other people. I know that, that the money will not benefit them. So I do, I do hear this a lot in my planning. Cool. Um, well, all right, so we have the two things. To share. So I've got seven here on the cards. I'm going to give two tips right now. So Super. one of them is to choose to support your friends and family emotionally mm -hmm. rather than financially. Oh, that's a great mm -hmm. one. Isn't that good? That's Very great because you're dealing with a helper you personality. You can still be helpful, mm -hmm. just not with your, your bank account. Very so good. So choose to choose support to help them, them emotionally. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, and this is uh, you know, different than the whole giving thing, but ask for what you need in life. Because these people tend to not ask for what they need. So they want what they need, and they don't get it because they don't ask for it. Mm -hmm. And then they feel resentful. 
So make a practice of figuring out for yourself what is it I need in this situation and then ask somebody for it. Okay, so we want the values person to think what they need and go practice by asking someone else for what they need mm -hmm. because they probably don't know how to do that. Right. Now, ultimately, they're used to being the giver, not the asker. Right, so if they go ask someone else for what they need, will they ultimately then be able to turn around to themselves and ask themselves for what they themselves need? Well, that is would that be, part of it? Because that, yeah. so, so in other words, right now I'm guessing if a person's caught up in values, they're not. And it's they're just not value. Oh, it's not value. Value. Like, okay, yeah. the value card. Really they're value. not really able to recognize their own needs because they're focused outside themselves. Right. Exactly. And so, so if they ask someone else for what they need and it's met, my thought would be eventually they would be able to turn to themselves and play the value card for themselves mm -hmm. and use their money to help themselves. Right. And this will also help them feel empowered because mm -hmm. their um, mentality is one of not feeling empowered and taken advantage of. So oftentimes it's hard for the, them to even articulate what they need because they're so used to meeting other people's needs, not their own. So this is a good mm -hmm. practice for helping them decide what do I want and need in life in any kind of situation, whether it's big or small, okay. and then getting up the courage to say, Nancy, here's what I need. I think that's a great practice. I know this I is going to be amazing. We're at time, so oh, gosh. do we want to go ahead and let's conclude it? Yeah, wrap it up and conclude it with let's, whatever you'd like. Yeah, let's, I was going to say, let's just, if people don't want to go Please. two minutes over, I'd like to finish up Not the last two, and hopefully someday you'll come back and we'll go through some of these other things we had on our list. Okay, so we go through values, and then after we had values, we had status. Mm -hmm. So the status card, their disempowering belief is... Uh, whatever I have or achieve, it's never enough. So they're always trying to fill a hole because they think they're not enough. So an empowering belief is I am successful and financially responsible. Okay. And that's going to feel like a, mm, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, that's why it's different. It's changing mm -hmm. your whole belief. So I am successful, just as I am, and financially responsible. And then here's... Um, a couple of ideas for them. So one is invest money in appreciating assets, not just the newest handbag or the coolest oh, okay. you know, so technology piece. Or instead of buying the fancy car, like I said, the plane or the boat, they're going to invest in something that will go up in value as opposed mm -hmm. to going down in value, but that will still make them feel like they've got status for having it. Right. Okay. And uh, another thing could be open up a savings account and save six months of expenses. I would That's love everybody hard. to do yes, that. <laughs> but I've actually had people tell me it's very boring. Mm -hmm. Having money and sitting in the bank is boring. People. Wow. Security people would not say that. They love <laughs> saving. Yeah, that's true. My security people mm -hmm. never say that. Yep. That is so true. <laughs> All right. So two good examples for a status person because having a bank account is not a high, high on the status because you're it's for either the status or the recognition people because it's just sitting there not being used for anything that you could have fun with or recognize <laughs> or show off or show, off. Or that's show right. off your bank account if that's going to make don't, you feel good they don't, that's <laughs> right. Look they how don't much walk I've around saved. with their bank statements very good all right and we'll get over to security <laughs> right. next and um and what do we do there so we can not yeah, go and too much over streaming, let me just show you what these cards look like so the um the security card, I'll show one of these. So the security card, their disempowering belief. Is you show it to right here. Oh, right here? Okay, there you go. See, they're quite beautiful. That's the, oh, they are, the love one. Yeah. They're quite lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, and they have lots of information and different ways that you can, um, you know, understand yourself. So the security card, their disempowering belief is I never know when what I have, whether it's love, money, or a job, will be taken away from me. So they're fearful that what they have. So even when they have a lot of money, Which is they're afraid it's going to go so away. So the depression are people we understand because the market. But other mm -hmm. people that are younger than the depression era obviously had something happen where things were taken away. And we can see that just in the 2000 market crash, the 2008 mm -hmm. market crash, the job loss, the loss of houses. I know I see a lot more people who are a lot more security-minded than they were in the 90s. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so an empowering belief for them might be there are always new opportunities to create wealth so that you don't have to feel like you can only do these certain things here so they're not they're not i know they're not going to become the risk takers mm -hmm. uh, that the recognition people would be but they could recognize that there are other ways to create wealth and then a couple of empowering actions so one would be create an investment plan so even though these people save investment seems like a risky proposition for them 
So mm-hmm. if they were to work with someone like you, you could help them put together an investment plan that would be kind of safe enough for their own security reasons. Well, and and that is so true because I do have a I do have people who come in that investment would never enter their vocabulary. So what we do is we look for safe guaranteed vehicles and there are a number of them so that the money works because it's Mm -hmm. not good to have a couple hundred thousand dollars sitting sitting in the bank account because all you're really doing is empowering the bank Mm -hmm. and your money literally is losing value because of inflation and you're missing out on opportunities to to grow if that will give you any motivation if you invest when you invest you can Mm -hmm. actually grow it if you invest because we don't want on the security minded side we don't want to be so afraid that we just let the money sit and and dwindle because we're afraid to move as long as we can understand that there's places where we're going to have you know the same kinds of guarantees and we're not going to risk it i think we can make some progress there mm-hmm. and today with interest rates as low as there i'm seeing more and more security people feeling a little annoyed that well my money mm-hmm. really isn't secure right, if i'm yeah. not getting any interest on it because mm-hmm. we do understand so now inflation. they might be a little more willing to try mm-hmm. something else that they wouldn't have tried before so i'm going to give them one more other idea and that's to create a, a vision board depicting luxury items that if only you like let yourself go you might actually buy for yourself So a vision board of luxury items (laughs) that it would be okay for you to have. Or activities. Or Or take Take a cruise. Mm -hmm. Right. Just and any and you know, or even if since it's hard to people are always trying to find something on sale here, you you know, find the sites where you can go where they do these last minute trips for a third of the normal cost. Something like that. So that because it is it's nice to see people who have the money who are security conscious allow themselves to do some enjoyment within their and comfort it's hard for zone. Them. It's right. very hard, but within their comfort zone, mm-hmm. I do have a number of people like this. And that is hard. And sometimes no matter what we say or how much we show how the money will last and what it's doing, we don't make I progress. It. But it is a but it it would be nice. I like the vision board. Yeah. And probably a lot of people would need to start a little smaller or um but yeah i think that's a great idea and for yeah and the thought here is to you know if they have pictures of things around that they, th- they that they agree are nice that if they see them they might get accustomed to thinking well it would be okay for me to have that it wouldn't mm-hmm. be you know because i think indulgence blurred would it be true that the security mm-hmm. people don't even allow themselves to think about any of those things right so they block that that side of life completely mm-hmm. away but the great thing about security minded people is they take a lot of pleasure in the simple things of life so often they don't mm-hmm. feel that they need that because they're happy anyway right and they find joy and a lot of the security minded people give a lot of service and they look out for others as far as with their time not money because they're security minded <laughs> right. but um but they don't find the need to do th- to do the cruises or to do the exotic trips because they take joy in living in and in their in although their some world. of that i think is kind of a justification it is some not I'm treating with themselves that. Or i do agree with that too to but i'm just saying split. what i'm saying from their perspective right. They don't feel a need for that. Yes, that's true. So, well, let's give your contact information once more. Okay. Well, the free this gift was that I was great. giving is this Emerald was great. Thank you. Harvest.com forward slash destiny, D E S T I N Y. And then if you're interested in the cards and if you're quick uh, this evening um, and want to have that 30 minute session with me, it's emeraldharvest.com forward slash money cards with an S at the end, money cards. Super. All right. We are over, but we did want to finish. We didn't want to leave those last couple out, so I hope that's okay, Oh, Joe. absolutely. And uh, we I sure appreciate all of the callers tonight. It was nice to be able to take each of these money card types and to flesh it out with some real stories. And, Loretta, we hope you will come back. I would love to. We Thank didn't. You. I mean, we talked so much ahead of this show, and there were so many wonderful things covered. And I hope you feel like with your passion in life and the people who called in that you have made a difference and made people stop and think. I hope so. Well, sure with all the calls it. that came in, it did seem like we yes. touched the nerve and reached out to some Right. People, so. Absolutely. And, and, Joe, thanks again. And thank you to all our listeners. You have been listening to Money and Motivation with Nancy Fleming, Joe, and Loretta. Have a great evening. Thanks, everyone. Hi, Marie here for WannaSing.com. Are you looking for professional DJ or karaoke services for your next holiday party or get-together? WannaSing.com can provide the best in sound, lighting, and a professional MC to host your next event. Whether it be a company party, birthday party, wedding, or any 